All right, everyone, we're going to wrap it up. I think we've, um, we're running out of time. So those of you who volunteered to um, come up here and give a synopsis, you're in luck. We're not going to make you do it. <laughs> Woo! Psych. No, I'm just kidding. No, but we would like, we, we, we are going to have Barbara and Pete up here. Just to, if there are any final questions that you guys have thought about during your breaks and everything, if you guys have, you know, a question for them, feel free to raise your hand and, and ask, or if there's any comments you have or anything like that. Um, I, so I think it's probably this this concept that open access content is, is a dramatically lower quality or, or there's a conflict of interest in the approval process. Uh, it's sort of related to this APC model and I think it's been driven by PLOS One and perhaps it, it's just because I used to run PLOS One that I hear that complaint a lot maybe. but. Um, I think there's, you know, there's a misunderstanding in the world that open access content is somehow not as good or worthy or well vetted as subscription content, and it's that's complete, you know, misunderstanding. It has exactly the same rigorous processes. It just perhaps is distributed a different way, or the peer review process asks perhaps different questions. In case of plus one, that's my my take on that. Can I just, you know. There's been a development in uh, this field, though, that's very alarming. And that is, if you've been following this lawsuit with um, Jeffrey Bial, there, I have to tell you, there, there really are predatory open access publishers out there. And, and they, are, they are relying on naivete of younger authors, or maybe authors that don't, aren't sophisticated in terms of scientific publishing. Uh, I will give you an anecdote. I'm not going to attribute it to anyone, but one of our editors, as an experiment, wrote a paper in which he invented a microorganism. He invented an analytical technique, and he wrote a paper giving the results of applying this novel technique to this new organism. And he submitted it to one of uh, the so-called predatory publishers, to a new open access journal in his field. And um, that promotes, you know, rigorous peer review. And two days later, he got a letter that said, because of the extraordinary quality of the work that he had submitted, the editors had decided it did not require external peer review. It was being immediately accepted without review. And by the way, please send a check for $1,250. So when stuff like this is going on, I think it's pretty easy to see that people start to, you know, wrongly equate the distribution model with quality. And uh, I, I really hope that by, you know, doing this lawsuit against the librarian who's brought this to everyone's attention, that these guys really get slapped down hard. Um, because this is, to me, truly offensive. And threatening him with jail time in India is like, you know, get out of here. And a billion dollar, you know, fine. It's like. <laughs> yeah, seconded. Yeah. Predatory <laughs> publishers are a, a real sort of threat to the reputation of the reputable publishers. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? To finish out the day? No? Well, I just want to thank all of you guys for coming and testing out this new kind of in, you know, setup that we have and hopefully everybody was able to hear and you guys got a lot of good information and especially thank Barbara and Pete for coming and bringing their expertise. So thank you very much.